Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So in the last class, we started the chapter work, energy and power. And I discussed with you about work, right? Okay. Now, uh, we also learned how to calculate the work done for a constant force. Constant force means, let us say the force is being applied for five seconds. And throughout this five seconds, the same amount of force is being applied on the body. Okay. For such case, we know how to calculate the work done. Okay, no problem. Now the thing is, in actual, actually this does not happen, that yeah, constantly you will be able to apply some force on a body and that body is moving. If that body is moving especially, then you it's very hard for us to apply the same amount of force on it. So what happens actually, the force varies. Now whenever we are talking about the change of force, there might be three cases. Number one, the force is changing by magnitude. Okay, the magnitude of the force is changing. Second, it might happen that the direction of the force is changing, even though the magnitude is kept same. Even that, if the direction changes, we can we can say that the force has changed. And third case, where the both of them will change. That means both the magnitude and the direction might change. Okay. Now, as you can see today, we are discussing about work done by variable force. That means the force is not going to stay constant anymore. It will vary. That means it will change. Which change we are talking about? The magnitude, the direction or both. We will discuss about the magnitude change only. Okay. Today, we will not consider that the direction is changing. We will consider the direction is constant. The magnitude is changing then how can we calculate the work done by that variable force where the magnitude is varying not the direction okay clear uh, <clears throat> uh, did you understand what i'm talking about yes okay so let us start going through the pages of the book okay page number 289 the second paragraph the first paragraph i have already explained second paragraph we will start okay suppose a force acts on an object in a particular direction the force acts in a straight line okay whenever it acts in a particular direction that means the force acts along a straight line either it is in the vertical horizontal or at some angle it acts always at a straight line let us consider x axis along the direction of the force that means the force is being applied along the direction of x as you can see i have already drawn a graph here right okay let the object moves along x-axis under the influence of this force so we are applying the force in the x direction and uh, the displacement is also taking place in the same direction so we can say that we are doing some work right we are doing some work as there is some displacement along the direction of the force under the influence of the force we are applying that's all however the direction of the force is constant. Yes, we are not changing the direction as I already told you, but its magnitude is not same throughout. So as you can see along Y axis, I have put F and you can see that it is not a constant line. If it was a straight line that is parallel to X axis, then you could have said the force is constant. But now you can see the force is increasing or sometimes it is remaining constant, something like that. Okay, we will consider that the force is changing throughout the process okay Achha. suppose the magnitude of the force depends on the distance x traversed by the object from the graph it is very clear right at the position of xi that there was a certain value of x and after the value of x changed okay x changed not exchange about because i'm saying as the value of x changed okay the force also changed see at this point there is a particular value of force at this point there will be a particular value of force right so depending on x the value of f is changing so what we can say we can say that f is a function of x remember whenever uh, we actually in higher math we already studied this type of thing that f of x is equal to we wrote that it is equal to 2x plus 1 right we used to write such thing so here the value of f of x will change depending on x right so this is a function of x right f of x this is a function of x okay as it depends on the value of x likewise the force here will change depending on the value of x so i can say that force is a function of x or displacement okay awesome. 
Hence, the force F is a function of distance x. Here they have also wrote, uh, written the same thing, wrote the same thing. Uh, we write this as f of x, when a function of x, okay? Figure 5.4 shows the graph, which figure I have drawn here, okay? Still the line in the middle are not drawn. I'm going to discuss about it. I just drew it beforehand to save the time later, okay? Achha. Now we will calculate the work done by variable force while the object is going from initial position xi to final position xf. From xi to xf, I'm moving it along x-axis i'm doing some work now i want to calculate the amount of work that i'm doing okay just give me one second cyphol is also present huh? so now we will calculate the work done by the variable force while the object is going from initial position xi to final position x. this is his displacement okay Achha. For that, we divide the total displacement into n equal parts. Okay, now what we are doing, what we have been doing all along, right? Since we started learning calculus, we know that if I want to calculate a certain property of a body, what we do? We divide or consider that the body is divided into several parts. We calculate that property for one part and then integrate it for the whole body to get the total amount. This is what we do, right? So the similar thing we will try to do here, we will divide the whole, uh, what do you say, the displacement into n part, n number of part, n can be any number, 100, 1000, any number as we want, okay? It depends on you in how many parts you want to divide it. To get the accurate result, you have to divide it as much as possible. That means each portion, the smaller the each portion is, the perfect the answer you will get. Why it is like that? Inshallah, we will get to know in a moment, okay? Achha. So what I did, I divided every, uh, I divided the whole displacement into small, small parts. Now, what is the width of each part? If I show you in this way, this width, this is delta x. Can you see it? I have shown here, each segment, the width of the each segment is delta x. That means the displacement here is delta x, okay? So delta x, delta x, delta x, delta x. How many delta x will be there? We have divided into n equal parts. So n number of delta x, it is going to be there. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So when we consider the first piece of displacement, Okay, what we can say, the body has moved from xi to xi uh, plus delta x. I can write it, right? This is the position xi, then if you add delta x with it, so the final position at the end of the first part, it is going to be xi plus delta x. So there has been a small displacement that is delta x, right? See, the distance is not same, so there has been a displacement we will calculate the small amount of work that has been done for this small displacement okay now <clears throat> come to the next page through the through though the magnitude of force is changing during this small displacement okay the force is changing right so as the force is changing during this small displacement the force will change small right Okay, now if I consider the displacement to be very, very small, this is what I was saying, that if I consider this displacement smaller and smaller, what will happen? I can consider that within this small distance, the force almost remains same. The change that occurred in case of force, it is negligible, I can consider it. If I consider the displacement very small, okay, almost near to the zero, then I can consider that the force almost remains same. That means throughout this first segment, the force remains same. I can consider it. If you think about it in this way, I will show you. Uh, let us consider this line, okay? I will show you the line on a larger scale. Let us say this is the line, okay? I think I need to change my marker. <clears throat> Okay, let us say this is the line that I have drew, that I have drawn here. So if I take a very small portion from it, if I take a very small portion from it, if you take a closer look, you will see that 
the portion that I have taken here almost looks like a straight line. So if in between these two point or in this segment, if the line is almost a straight line, I can consider the force is constant, right? Because this line represents the force. If in any part, I can see that it almost looks like a straight line, I can say that throughout this segment, the force is constant, okay? So for this part, okay, for this part, I can calculate the amount of work. Let us say it will be delta W1. As it is a small amount of displacement, a small amount of work will be done, and delta W represents a small amount of work, okay? So for the first segment, it will be, let us say the force that has been applied here and which remains actually constant is f1 and the displacement cost is delta x okay then again i will consider the next portion okay for the next portion let us consider that the work done is w2 now you will see that i have to consider the change of force now okay in the for the first segment i considered the force is constant now while we are going moving to the second one definitely the force will change from the first segment to the second segment throughout the second segment i will consider it constant but it is changed from the previous one right, right? throughout the process uh, first segment let us consider i uh, let us say i have considered 5 newton okay while i'm moving to the second one it became 5.2 okay so for the second segment the force will be changed uh, there will be a new value of force right so let us say that is F2 and the displacement is still delta X because every time we are approaching by delta X, delta X. So likewise, I can actually calculate W3, F3 into delta X and I can go up to delta W N as I have taken N number of parts, right? So N number of delta W will be there. Okay, if I have divided into 10 part, then 10 delta W will be there, okay? Delta one, delta two, likewise, delta W, 10. Okay, so uh, now I have divided into n equal part, so n number of parts will be there. Uh, and means n number of work done will be there. If I want to get the total work done, what I need to do? I need to add them up, right? If I add them all, then what will happen? I will get the total work done, that is W. So W will look like delta W1 plus delta W2 plus it will, it will continue up to delta W n. So replace the value of delta W, F1 into delta X plus F2 into delta X. It will continue up to 1, 2, it will continue up to n. Fn into delta X. So this one can be written like this. <coughs> uh, summation of a equal to 1 to n f k delta x i can write it in this way okay now the value of k has been defined here it will start from 1 right it is started from 1 and it went up to n it went up to n do you understand this line everyone please respond if you have any doubt sir arikbar bolen a line okay? So um, we know that this sign actually represents the summation. It is a summation sign, right? So summation of what? Summation of all the forces into displacement. So from where it will start? I have written FK, right? See, all this number 1, 2, 3, 4, up to N has been represented by K. So this K must be defined from where it starts. The value of K starts from one and it will continue up to n you can see that it continues up to n do you understand so this one represents one, uh, first the value of k will be one then it will be this one then the value of k will be two then you will get this one okay summation this is summation so plus plus will be there and we will continue up to n if n is 10 then we will write k is equal to 1 so f1 del x k is equal to 2 so f2 del x that is the second one likewise will continue up to 10. do you understand yes yeah. so uh, in this way also we can express the in the summation form lamia to me booster versa g okay <clears throat> so this is a general equation 
but as i already told you that we will get more accurate value if i make the segments smaller as the segments will be smaller number of segments will be increased right ami jodi ek ekta segment ke aro choto kore feli taile aro beshi number of segment ekhane ashbe so ei jinish ta ektu bujhte hobe as the width of each segment gets smaller the number of uh, actually segment total number of segment gets larger so as i approach zero if the width approaches zero the number of uh, segment approaches to infinity right zero almost zero jodi hoye jay taile eta almost infinite number of uh, parts kora jabe ekhane thik ache acha তো এখানে ছোট এই যে সেগমেন্ট গুলো ছোট কেন করব কারণ একটু চিন্তা করলে দেখো এখানে আমরা বারবার বলতেছি দ্যাট উই আর কনসিডারিং দা ফোর্স কনস্ট্যান্ট ফর ইচ সেগমেন্ট এই সেগমেন্টের জন্য ফোর্সটা কনস্ট্যান্ট পরের সেগমেন্টে যখন যাব তখন ফোর্সটা চেঞ্জ হয়ে যাবে বাট ওই সেগমেন্টের জন্য আবার যে ফোর্সের যে ভ্যালুটা নিচ্ছে সেটা ওই ওই উইথ যতক্ষণ আছে ততক্ষণের জন্য কনস্ট্যান্ট ঠিক আছে তো এভাবে যদি আমরা কনসিডার করতে চাই আমরা কখন কনসিডার করতে পারবো এই উইথটাকে যত ছোট বেশি ছোট নিব ততই আমাদের জন্য বেটার হবে যে মানে ফোর্সটা আমরা ততই কনস্ট্যান্ট কনসিডার করতে পারবো কারণ যদি বড় একটা ফোর্স বড় একটা সেগমেন্ট নাও তাহলে দেখো এখানের মধ্যে ফোর্সের যে চেঞ্জটা সেটা কিন্তু আমি নেগ্লিজিবল নাই তো তাহলে যত তুমি ছোট সেগমেন্ট বানাইতে পারবা তাহলে কি হবে তত বেশি অ্যাকুরেট হবে তোমার রেজাল্টটা বিকজ ফোর্সটা তত বেশি কনস্ট্যান্ট থাকবে সো ওয়ার্ক এর যে ভ্যালুটা আমরা পাবো সেটা তত বেশি অ্যাকুরেট হবে चले जाए जिरोक्सर अच्छा प्रॉब्लम The application of it, I will show it. Just the derivation. Are you clear about it? Yes. Okay. So I all I also told you to see some videos. Okay. In the last class, I sent you some videos to watch about this. You know, what are the variable force? So, do you find any uh, dissimilarity of information? between what we what i taught today and uh, uh, the video that you saw anything no okay this is the same i hope okay then uh, we have work done against elastic force let us discuss about this okay whenever we talk about this elastic force the first thing that can comes to our mind is the elastic shirt pants right elasticity rubber or something what is the second thing that comes to our mind
something spring spring mm -hmm. very good that is the second thing that comes to our mind right so if a spring is rigidly attached one end of the spring is rigidly attached to something okay and the other end is free you can apply some force on it okay if you apply force in this direction it will be elongated and if you apply force in this direction it will be compressed now in both case you will feel the presence of another force that is generated in the opposite direction of the direction of your applied force what do i mean if i hold the spring here and try to expand it what will happen in my finger i will feel that in the spring a opposite force has been generated which is actually trying to get back uh, the spring to its relaxed state or the equilibrium state i hope you understand what i mean by e equilibrium state or relaxed state right when no force is acting on it the position that it is that is equilibrium state or relaxed state now you apply some force and cause some deformation or displace, uh, deformation actually not displacement but deformation we will rather say it is deformation okay so when we cause some deformation it is elongated right so in your finger you will feel that an opposite force has been generated the more force you apply that means the more elongation you cause the greater force you will feel in your hand and once uh, and, and at a point you will feel that uh, you cannot hold it anymore with your finger okay so you have to let it go and you will feel that it has come back to its relaxed state or equilibrium state right so the force that is generated within this spring okay that force is called actually elastic force okay the force we apply that is the applied force that is not the elastic force the this force which is generated within the spring which helps the spring to get back to its relaxed state is called the spring force okay now uh, okay so if i want to actually define elasticity the body the bodies which have actually this property by virtue of which they can regain its relaxed state that property is called elasticity if a body can go back to its relaxed state or equilibrium state then we can say this body has elasticity if it cannot then it doesn't have elasticity okay that's <clears throat> um now the force that is actually generated here let us say we already uh, i already said that it is called a spring force now this force is actually proportional to the displacement that means uh, here is the spring this is the original position let us say now this one i hold and pull okay and let us say i have caused x amount of displacement of this end okay so if i double the displacement the force that is generated here will be doubled that means let us say i have expanded it two meter for that expansion of two meter some amount of force is generated within this okay we all agree upon that whenever we will deform it whether it is elongation or compression um, some force will be generated and that force will definitely be in the opposite direction of your applied force if you have apply force in this direction it will try to regain its state by applying an opposite force if you compress it then also it will apply an opposite force trying to regain its relaxed state right i hope you understand this one so you will see that um, the more deformation you cause the larger force you feel in your hand can you imagine it do you can do you feel it yeah. as saying it okay if you feel it you know by a small distance you will not actually feel that much of presence of the force but if you keep on pulling it then you will feel that the force uh, opposite force that is being generated in the spring is getting larger and larger so there is some relation between the displacement and the force so the relationship is proportional that that means if you double this amount the force generated in this one will get doubled understood my point yes okay so <clears throat> now to withdraw this 
uh, proportional sign and put an equal sign, we know that we must introduce a constant, right? That constant is called constant of proportionality, right or wrong? Yes. Okay. So now this equation is actually written as f of x is equal to minus kx. Can anybody tell me why there will be a minus? Very good. Right. In this equation, two vector quantities are involved. Okay. First one, force. Sorry, fx can only come it fs. So this force is a vector quantity, and this x displacement that is also a vector quantity. So they are always in the opposite direction. Always. Okay, you cause the displacement in this direction, in the opposite direction, the force will be generated. If you compress it, the displacement will be in this direction, but the force generated will be in the opposite direction. So you have to consider one of them to be positive. So if you consider the direction of x to be positive, generally, automatically, the direction of f will become negative. And if you consider x to be negative, then f of s, fs, this will become positive. So one of them is always negative, right? So there will be the amount that we will achieve from here will always be negative, okay? So that is why minus is there in case of a spring force. But if I tell you what is the force applied by us, that force will be actually like this, F is equal to AX, okay? Because we are applying the force in this direction, the displacement is also being caused in that direction. They both are in the same direction. So they both are positive, okay? Now you might say, sir, what if I consider this direction to be negative? Then what will happen? the force will be negative and the displacement will also be negative because they both are in the negative direction. So minus minus will be canceled and they will become positive. The equation will become positive again, okay? Now, here I already told you that this K is called generally const, uh, proportion, constant of proportionality. But as this is an equation of a spring force, this constant is has a special name that name is spring constant spring constant now this is spring constant uh, is constant for a particular spring you change the spring for the next spring there will also be a particular value of k okay which will remain constant until you change the spring okay so do not get confused that it is constant for all the springs in the world. It's not like that, okay? It is constant for a particular spring. Monikaro, you make spring niye kaj korte so? A spring ta niye joto kono tumi joto kaj koro na keno, shob shomoy tumi k er value eta use korte parba. That is constant. But as soon as you change the spring, the value of k will change. So each spring has a particular value of k for it, okay? You have to use that when you are dealing it with that particular spring, okay? I hope you understood. Okay, so this is called the spring constant. Clear? Acha. Now yeah. we're going to see the calculation of work done against this spring force. Okay, as you can see, we are applying some force and some displacement is being caused. Okay, so let me show you the work done. Now we know that W is equal to force into displacement, right? Now, if you notice this F, we have found out for a spring, okay? Now this is not work done by variable force. This is work done against a spring force. Against spring force. Now why I'm saying against a spring force? Because the displacement is in the opposite direction of the spring force, right? So this F is equal to, we got that it is equal to Kx, okay? So it will be Kx square, okay? And uh, if I integrate it for whole amount, then it will be dx. So it will be Kx square dx. Now, oh, So this k is a constant, it will come out of uh, the integration, it will be x squared dx, okay? 
So if you do the integration using this formula x to the power n dx, then it will be x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, if you remember. So k into, um, oh, oh, here I made a mistake, I guess. It will be f into dx because dx is the amount of displacement. As I will show you from the beginning, okay, better. Because again, at the end, should take a bull like it. It also W is equal to it have the camera small amount of work I'm considering. So F into DX for a small displacement, small amount of work will be there. But if I want to calculate the total amount of work, okay, that go DW, it is the small amount of work for this small displacement. If you want to calculate the total amount of work, then I have to integrate. Integration and differentiation, they will be balancing each other here. F I will replace by kx dx. So W will be equal to K will be coming outside and it will be integration x dx. So <clears throat> if you remember this integration x to the power n dx becomes x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Now here we have x to the power 1. So the value of n here is 1. So it will be k into x to the power 1 plus 1 is 2 divided by 1 plus 1, 2, okay? So half k x squared. This is the amount of work done or equation to calculate the amount of work done against the spring force, okay? I can see that we have actually come to the end of our class. So before we end the class, I want to ask you, do you have any doubt in the derivation of this? Because I got a little bit puzzled. No. Okay. So kindly uh, read the lines of the books as I always tell you to check if there is any confusion. Okay, and let me know uh, before the next class through WhatsApp so that I can discuss that at the beginning of the next class. And also I'd like to request you to go through page number uh, 293, the extended activity, 294, uh, two, uh, up to 294, okay, up to page number 294, kindly go through it, okay, and let me know if you have any doubt, I will start discussing from page number 295, work done against force of gravity. Okay, so let me take the attendance again as Saiful joined later.